Are you tired of your audio recording sounding dreadful? No matter what you try, the audio is flat and you don't know what to do to make it sound better. In this video, we'll uncover the most common mistakes that ruin your audio quality. Get ready to transform your recordings and achieve professional grade sound. My name is Mike Russell from Music Radio Creative. I've been producing audio for the past 20 years and would like to share my knowledge with you. Mistake number one is the positioning of the microphone. A lot of people get this wrong. They put a microphone on the desk in front of them, really far away, or they move their boom arm out of the shot if they're doing video. For instance, let me show you. Right now I'm talking virtually into the mic. It's a small tip, but the closer you get to the microphone, the better your audio sounds. However, moving that out of shot, I don't sound too good. Putting this in front of me, but uh, far away, in an on the desk position, not too good. Over here, not covering my face, but in direct line at a 45 degree angle to my mouth, perfect. Mistake number two is the wrong audio levels between recordings or guests. Or sometimes we're out and about and we get back and we realize what we recorded is way too loud. For instance, take a look at these two recordings. This one is way too loud. This is me talking too loud. And you can see that the levels go into the red here indicating way too loud. And then I've got something too quiet can't even hear it, but you can see levels on the meters over here. So if you've recorded too loud, the issue this is... This is me talking. You cannot recover that information. It is distorted there. Unless you're recording into an audio editor like Audition and you choose to start your bit depth in 32 float. I always advise this as it will preserve information that even goes above the 0 dB level. So that's one way to fix this particular issue. Another way you can fix it is by turning it down a little bit and going into the window menu looking for diagnostics and then checking out for the D clipper. Reduce heavily clipped or restore heavily clipped scanning and then repairing can sometimes make your audio sound better, but a lot of the times it won't do a great job. The same with quiet audio. I can go ahead and turn this up using the turn up dial and bit by bit I'm recovering that audio. The only problem is if I go to shift and D or switch on spectral frequency, I'm also recovering the noise. Generally, in between speech, it should look black like this section here, but turning this audio up, I'm recovering all that noise which is not a great thing. So do set those audio recording levels correctly at source if you possibly can. Here's another great tip. You've got two recordings here at different levels. As you can see, if you pull them into the multi-track where you can do mixing, let's create a brand new multi-track session and bring in those recordings with two different levels, split them in two using Control and K and then select both waveforms, right click, go for match clip loudness and Adobe Audition is automatically going to level them to exactly the same volume by in this case, turning this down by minus 4.9 dB and turning this one up by 13.5 dB you now have a perfect session with audio recordings at the same level. Look, this audio recording is quite loud, about minus 12 dB. This audio recording is not about minus 12 dB. And before we did that, this audio recording is quite minus 9 dB. This audio recording is not minus 24 dB. Mistake number three is recording audio and then not using the tricks like EQ, compression, and other things such as reverb to add production values to your voices. Here's a dry voiceover I've got. This is a voice I'm going to improve. Pretty bland at the moment, but I can go ahead in my effects rack and start adding some stuff. So what am I going to do? Well, first of all, I'll add filter and EQ, parametric equalizer. An easy win is the vocal enhancer preset. This is a voice I'm going to improve. And I can even notch up five. This is a voice I'm going to get more crispness and clarity. And then we'll go ahead and add amplitude and compression. We'll do dynamics and we'll simply add a very small compressor here. So compression on. I recommend a ratio of three for vocals. Leave attack and release the same. Increase the makeup gain by 6 dB to boost it up. This is a voice I'm going to improve. And we can even increase the makeup gain even more to make it louder. This is a voice I'm going to improve. Sounding pretty good. And then we can go ahead and add some more stuff like, for instance, a hard limiter. Especially if we're doing imaging work, this can work really well. Minus 1 dB the limit and maybe boost the uh, volume here by about 5 dB. This is a voice I'm going to improve using different effects. So that's how it sounds after all my effects, before my effects. This is a voice I'm going to improve using different effects. And one more time after. This is a voice I'm going to improve using different effects. 
tip number four is a lack of pop filters and uh, getting your wires crossed. Bad cable management. We've all had a bad cable day, just like a bad hair day, but it can affect your recording. So if you're outside, definitely put one of these socks on your microphones to stop the wind and the blowing and all of that kind of stuff. And generally, if you're recording in a studio, have a pop filter in front of your microphone. Or even better, if you don't want to have the pop filter, just talk at a 45 degree angle as I'm doing. If I were to talk right into the microphone and say puh words, I would vibrate the capsule inside the microphone and create rather terrible recordings. Let's look at those. Okay, so getting rid of pops, uh, well, we can do that in many ways. Peter Piper picked a peck. So first of all, we can marquee select and just brash delete those low frequencies here using spectral frequency, and that can work quite effectively. Peter Piper picked a peck. And it's, it's done quite well, but it's quite aggressive. We can also use the paintbrush tool and we just paint out those little pops like that. And we can hold down shift to select multiple pops, hit delete like that, and that helps soften it up. Some people even go a step further and they simply select the whole pop and delete it. Peter Piper picked. But you lose the p sound. That's the only problem. If done carefully, you can improve a pop, but I'd suggest using either these brushes or simply going ahead and finding a plugin that will do that for you. With regards to hum, that's pretty difficult. This is me with awful ground loop hum. Definitely don't get your wires or your cables crossed. In effects, under noise reduction and restoration, you'll find a de-hummer. And again, here on the default, this is me with awful. You can start to move this about to get rid of hums. This is me with awful ground loop hum. And as you can hear, as I'm moving this around, it is deleted some of it. We can output the hum only. And we can try and find that hum using this plugin. But ideally, in the first place, you wouldn't have your cables crossed. Tip and mistake number five is having background noise. We all get it from time to time. Air conditioning, street noise, planes taking off, you name it, it can happen. But you can eliminate it using a lot of tools in Adobe Audition. I'm going to show you how. First of all, if you go to this recording here, you'll notice in spectral where it should be black, where there's no speech, there's a little bit of room noise. Now, this can easily be eliminated by setting up a simple noise gate. In the effects rack, we'll go to amplitude and compression, and we'll go to dynamics. And here, yeah, we'll just make sure only the noise gate is on. And if we go to a before and after comparison, if we set this threshold at such a decent level that it lets the speech through, as you can see in both instances, the speech is getting through, but the background noise is eliminated. So that's one way. If you've got rather a bit more noise, you can actually go ahead and use the denoise plugin. And again, this will do a similar thing from 0% all the way up to 100%, removing background noise. And this one in particular is quite good for background noise like fans, uh, street noise, and more. And finally, mistake number six. And the bonus mistake is using the wrong kind of microphone. Uh, now, as great as they are, the little lavalier mics, like for instance, this one, uh, this will never pick up as good quality audio as my $3,000 microphone will. But sometimes we're in a budget conscious decision and we need to get something that sounds good but won't break the bank. Well, don't worry, I've got answers for you there. AKG P120 is a solid mic and it comes in usually around $99. Also, the Rode set of microphones, particularly their Wireless Go series, are fantastic for filmmakers out on the go who want to get a consistently good sound. So let me know in the comments what is your biggest mistake and how did you fix it? The next thing you need to do is subscribe to my channel. I got weekly videos that will educate and inform you on the topic of audio, audio production and getting great sound for filmmakers. So just subscribe and, and go and watch this other video on the screen somewhere that tells you what my favorite effects are when producing audio.